Hey guys, welcome back to question of the week. Today we're going to be covering a, another classic problem. It is palindrome. I'm Jason Wang, currently a senior in Luddy studying computer science. I hosted last week's episode. Probably going to be a pretty common appearance on this series, but that being said, let's dive right into the problem here. So for those of you that don't know what a palindrome is, let me just kind of open up a notepad. So a good example of a palindrome would be something like level. The reason this is a palindrome is because if you read this forwards or backwards, it's the exact same, right? Mom is another palindrome. Dad is another palindrome. Race car is a little bit of a longer palindrome. And a really famous palindrome that's not a word, but actually saying, and that's actually used in a test case here, is a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. So you can actually say a man, plan, canal, Panama. So this is still considered a palindrome, especially in the case of this, right? So the reason I wanted to cover this problem today is because on the surface, this is really easy, but this has a lot to do with exception handling and figuring out edging corner cases. And this emphasizes the importance of that. And I'll show you why, right? So when I first saw this problem, I thought this was going to be pretty easy, probably like a couple liner. And it was just, my original solution was this. You know, we have a for loop here pretty much. And what we're doing is we're comparing, actually, let me do this in IntelliJ so I make sure I don't make any syntax here. Let's see. Okay, great. So originally I was gonna go, for loop to iterate through pretty much each character. So, if the character at the beginning, it's an if statement, right? Character at the beginning doesn't equal the character at, it's gonna be s dot length minus one minus i. So we're pretty much just comparing from the beginning and the end and working inwards here. So this is gonna start at zero and work to the right. This is actually gonna start at the very last character and work to the left. If they're ever not equal, return false. Otherwise, if we get to the end of the for loop and we haven't gotten to that return statement, then we'll just return true at the end. Which is great. This is five lines or something, whatever. I pasted this and I ran this code and I was like, great, it's gonna be a super short episode and it's the wrong answer. And I was trying to think about why. And then there's a lot of things, right? Number one, if I were to like, let's 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 create our own custom test cases here, right? We have like our own. So if we were to so if we remember one of our examples was level, right? So we put level in here. We have to make a string though. Put level in here. It should return true, right? Okay, great. Uh, so it should work. But what happens if we capitalize this? It should still be a palindrome, right? Let's see what our function does. Oh, it's returning false. I wonder why that is, right? Because what we're doing here is a oversimplified comparison, right? Because in when you're comparing the letter L capital to lowercase, this is always going to be false, right? Because they're technically not the same character, right? You can see it's false. So in this example, the first letter capital A to lowercase a, that's already a problem. Right. So then I tried, okay, why don't we just make it lowercase? I believe that's the right sentence. Yeah. And it should work now. Great. We've solved our problem, right? Okay. It's still wrong. Why is this the case? Oh, okay. Because if we, this, our solution works with words, right? So we, we can try it with level again. It works with strings as long as there are no spaces. But if we add a space here, that should technically be a palindrome. And we can check in this case, right? Always check with the interviewer exactly what they want. In this case, look, this is supposed to be a palindrome. There's a ton of spaces here, right? So this should still work. It should be the same. 
but it's false because we're comparing the space to at this point like a v probably and v and space character again are not equal okay so we have to address that and then there's more if you look in here there's a comma and there's a colon that we have to address right so that that creates a new set of parameters for us to kind of address right and then we also have to understand that for the purpose of this problem we're defining empty string as well right so when I first had this problem, I kind of dove right in and just thought that I already had the correct answer and thought I was a big smarty pants, but it turns out I was actually very, very, very wrong. So again, when you get the solution or when you get the question, the first thing you need to do is clarify everything, right? Given the string, determine if it is a palindrome. Okay, can you clarify to me what exactly is a palindrome, right? Is it just going to be words? Do phrases count? Okay, they're considering only alphanumeric characters and ignoring cases, right? So does this mean if it's not an alphanumeric character, for example, if it is a colon or a comma, are we just passing it over pretending it doesn't exist and ignoring cases? Okay, that means that in this case, capital L and lowercase L should still be considered equal. It shouldn't violate the rule. Okay, great. And for the purpose of the problem, we define empty string as valid palindrome. Okay, now we know a bit on how to handle all the exceptions here, okay? So the first thing we want to get the low hanging fruit. So super e easy. S equals the empty string. Return true. You know, that's kind of a free spot right there. And you can see I don't use the double equals comparator. I use the dot equals because it's a string, which is you have to use that to compare two strings. Okay, let's say it's not, we don't get that free spot. Let's say it's a non empty string. So I had a couple of solutions here and they're all really bad until I started actually really thinking. And what I, my thought process for this was, from an algorithm perspective, how would I as a human being process whether or not a string is an algorithm? Right, let's get rid of this for now. So when I'm looking at a string and determining itself is a palindrome, I look at the first character and I look at the last character and if they're the same, then I move on. If they're different, I know it's not a palindrome, right? So why don't we just do that? Right, there's no reason to really overcomplicate this. Why don't we just do that? So the initial solution is to the initial instinct for me is was to use a for loop here. But the problem with that is if you, for example, are in this solution and you come up with a comma, the for loop will advance one index. If you only have one for loop, right? So if you have like a basic If you have a basic for loop here, it's gonna iterate i, and then your pointers are probably gonna be i, and then s dot length minus one minus i, which is what I had in the original solution. But then, like in this case, we'd only want to move the pointer on the left because we're disregarding the comma, and in this case, we're disregarding the space as well, right? So what I actually did is I created two separate pointers. And I did something like this. I don't know if pointers is actually the right term. I know we're not in C right now, but I kind of use them as like general indi indices, references, whatever you want to call them. So I have int front, int back. So they're, we know where they're going to start, right? And before I forget, we should make s equal to zero, or sorry, s equal to lowercase because we're ignoring cases here. And after we do this, after we set our pointers, we're going to have a little bit of a while loop. So if you notice my first solution, I kind of just go from zero all the way to the end, but this is dumb because it's doing twice as much work because if you're comparing from both ends, once you cross the middle, you're going to do comparisons they've already done. So there's no, use to, no reason to do that. So we're going to have a simple while loop that says, while our left pointer is still behind the back, we're going to do some comparisons. Otherwise, once they cross, there's no point in continuing to do the work, right? So we're going to, again, we're going to be comparing the characters at these given indices. So we're going to go, we can declare a character variable here. So that'll be the, the one at the front. Right, the one at the very beginning, the one at the very end. And how we're gonna do this is as we go throughout this, this function, we're gonna move front up. So we're gonna increment front, but we're gonna decrement back. So it goes backwards, right? Because the, again, the front is your ascending as an index and the back is your descending as an index. So that's why we're incrementing front and decrementing back. So the first thing you want to do, you know, I was trying to figure out how to deal with this special character situation. And I found the best way to do it is that the character 
at least in Java, has a built-in function called is letter or digit, right? So this just says, is it a letter or a digit? And in this case, alphanumeric characters are the only ones we're considering, so this is really convenient. So if the two characters we're comparing are letters or digits, then great. We can go ahead and compare them, and then this is the super easy case, right? So if they don't equal to each other, then we're gonna return false right off the bat. Right, if only if they're both letters or digits can we actually compare them. Otherwise, what if the left character isn't a digit? Right. Well, if the left character isn't a digit, for example, if we're going from the left and we run into this comma, why don't we just move up that index until we get somewhere? Right? Alternatively, you have the same exact thinking for the character that you're looking at from the back. If you're going from the back and you run into this colon or you run into this space, you just want to skip over it because you don't want to compare, let's say this space, to this end, you want to compare this end to whatever the next character from right to left is. So you're disregarding all that stuff. So we're going to, again, decrement back here. And I also want to say that if you're comparing two characters and they are true and you want to move on, you're going to have to increment both of them because you're moving the little pointers or indices together. Right? Cool. So again, walking through the solution, if this given string is empty, great. Return true off the bat. It's not, we're going to convert it to lowercase. We're going to have two indices, index variables pointing to the front, the very starting from the very first character, the very last character. While those two pointers are, have not passed each other yet, we're gonna look at the characters that those pointers are referencing within the given string. If they're both letters or digits, then we can compare them. If they're not equal at any point, we're gonna turn false. Otherwise, we can look at the next ones. If one, if the character on the left is not, a letter or digit, we want to skip it, right? It doesn't break the palindrome rule, we just want to skip it. So we move it up, move up the left pointer. If the character on the right is not a letter or digit, it's the same thing, we want to skip it, it doesn't break the rule, so we're just going to decrement that index. So let's copy paste this code and run it. Okay, so it passed the Amanda planned a canal Panama test, which is good because we could pass that test earlier. So now we're gonna submit it and let's see what leak code has to say. Okay, great. So it's passed all the tests and in terms of runtime and space, let's look at this carefully. So in terms of runtime, really the only thing that takes any time is, is this while loop here. And what this is really doing is you're just comparing letters in a linear fashion. So this should run in O of N, right? Because you're really only gonna be looking at each character once. There's no reason to kind of go back. There's no repeating. And then in terms of space, right? We just have, let's look, we have an integer variable, integer variable, we're not creating a new string. We're just taking the input string and, you know, making it lowercase. So yeah, I mean, th those are the things that we have to consider here across the board. That being said, that was this episode of Bloody Question of the Week. This palindrome. We're going to be going over some more advanced questions in the future, but wanted to get you guys started off with some really popular, but relatively easy to explain, easy to understand questions. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me and I will see you guys next week.